and now hello to YouTube. Uh, we've created our species, the Wadian Collective. As you can see here, they have a collective consciousness. They're currently ruled by Glumpus. Um, their capital planet is Sagi. They are a gestalt consciousness with subsumed will and one mind. Their traits are that they uh, have a tropical preference that's based off of the starting world we, we made. They are hive-minded, agrarian, communal, and sedentary. And so, at the dawn of time, we awoke. The mind studied our surroundings on Sagi with a multitude of eyes. We moved as one, building shelters for the drones, developing industry, researching new technologies, and harnessing the resources of the land. Soon, we had grown to encompass the entire world. A small number of autonomous drones were created to serve as independent agents. These more formidable drones had the capacity for limited free thought but were still as inexorably bound to the will of the mind as any of its other instruments. As we achieved complete dominion over Sagi, the mind became aware of other worlds, orbiting other suns. The most intelligent of our autonomous drones devised new methods of travel, enabling us to cross the vast distances between the stars. The The Wadians Collective will soon grow. So anytime you start a game, they will give you that uh, sort of spiel based off of what uh, races you picked. Um, when we start, our military fleet starts with a few um, minor uh, corvettes here, just three, uh, with no leader. We start with a construction ship to build things, makes sense and a science ship to investigate things. Now, I believe we can just set the science ship to, oh, okay, no, we don't have the protocols for that yet. Oh, we don't need to investigate the worlds within our own uh, our own system anymore. That's nice. All right. <laughs> now then, how do I zoom out? <laughs> there we are. So this so this is the solar system of or the SOG system, I should say. The soggy system. Let's let's call it how it is. <laughs> um, we've got Blurp, Gluckledor, Ugustak, Ashla, DTLF four thirteen. That's a uh, very large asteroid in the asteroid belt of this system. Uh, was there any other? Oh, yep, Glump and Flurp. And then we have uh, a barren world here called Schlugleria. Um, oh, a couple more here. Clegg and Uglundia. Uh, the barren worlds aren't going to be very helpful to us for a very long time. Uh, eventually we can learn to do stuff to them, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. Um, but for now, we can see up here that we've got uh, eight energy. Energy is our uh, economy, our money, essentially. 32 minerals, it's what we use to build things with. 13 food, that helps our population grow. We have no consumer goods, 11 alloys, uh, four influence, six, uh, 15 unity, and research split up in different ways but a total of 62 research uh, no special uh, materials yet our empire sprawl is currently 13 because we've got nine districts one system one colony 
and our administrative capacity is 30. So our Empire Sprawl can go up to 30 with no penalties. After that, it, you can still go higher, it just starts to suck. <laughs> uh, our How many systems we've colonized is currently one. How many planets we have, currently one. We have a total population of 32. We've got one star base, which is right here. You can zoom in really close on them too, which is really cool. So this is our star base. It's right next to our planet of Sagi. Um, and then it is in the Sagi system. So first thing we're going to want to do is figure out what's around us. So in that case, that is what our science ship is for. So we're going to have him come explore this system. And then explore this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So it gives our science ship quite a bit to do. While he's doing that, we will have our construction ship build us a mining station here so we can get some more minerals and then Sagi itself um, you can see here we have a hive district the generator district a mining district and an agricultural district we currently have two out of six mining, two out of six uh, generators. We have two uh, additional generator districts that can be built after their blockers are cleared. And blockers are uh, things on the planet that prevent us from building. They really changed this up since the last time I played too. Because uh, it used to tell you what the blockers were um, agricultural district can have uh, up to seven and then two more uh, once blockers are cleared. Here we are. So here are our blockers. We've got two industrial wastelands, one collapsed burrow. There are no rare planetary features. And if we click here, we can see these are our current planetary features giving us the different bonuses. So we've got some tropical islands, we've got some lush jung jungle, some green hills, submerged ore veins, prosperous mesas, mineral fields, uh, tempestuous mountains, rushing waterfalls, and hot springs, all giving us different ways to generate different uh, resources. Here is the collapsed burrow that we're going to need to deal with at some point. Here is the industrial wastelands that we will need to clear at some point. Um, here is our building queue. We currently have our hive core, which is providing housing, amenities, uh, drone jobs of different types. It also lets us know what our synapse drones are doing, what our maintenance drones do, what our hunter seeker drones do, uh, so on and so forth. Then we've got our maintenance depots, which uh, provide jobs and uh, gives us uh, job production. Then we've got our research labs, which turns minerals into research points. So our research labs take 12 minerals to use, provides research points for the different type of research, which we'll go into in a moment because we'll need to set what we're researching. We have the alloy foundries, which are new to me, um, but they turn minerals into alloys. 
I'm not quite sure what alloy, alloys are used for yet. Uh, here we are. They're used to construct ships and star bases. So, good to know. We've got spawning pools, which will help us uh, increase our population. We've got the Hive Warren, which will increase uh, uh, our housing, how many people we can hold. So at the moment, we've got 32. We are 61% stable. Uh, the lower this is, the more likely our planet will revolt. Uglug is our governor of the planet. He is righteous, so crime will be lower. Crime with a hive mind doesn't make much sense to me, but okay. <laughs> uh, we have 12 available housing. Um, our population housing need is 32. So we need to get some more housing. Um, or less people. Two different types of ways to think about it. <laughs> we currently have 12 amenities, which will uh, help with uh, stability. And so we're, we're good there. So yeah, I think we're going to need a little bit more housing. Since we are currently at negative 28 in terms of our housing needs. So if we come here, these are all the different things we can build. And what we want is another hive warren. But we don't have the resources for it yet. So that's going to be what we want to build first. So we'll just leave that be for the time being, since we don't have uh, the resources to build yet. If we go to our population, we can see we've got 24 menial drones. They're the ones that are producing our minerals, our uh, food, our uh, maintenance, and or sorry, our maintenance and our tech. Uh, the complex drones, they help to increase our population growth. Uh, they help produce our uh, more unity and uh, science, social science. Uh, the brain drones, they're our researchers. The foundry drones are producing our alloys. And the hunter seeker drones help keep our deviancy down, uh, which for a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hive mind is very important. We've got uh, our population currently growing. We are not currently assembling any population. And there's no pop decline because there is no other place for them to go at the moment. And then our armies, we've got two defense forces. We're going to keep that as is for now. We'll eventually upgrade and add more but for for right now we don't know anybody else we're not uh, threatened so we'll just keep it at the at the two defense forces now physics research so we've got three types of research physics society and engineering we have three scientists we've got we've got four scientists because there's one in our science ship um, so, the one in our science ship is Glaber Glover. He has a survey speed of plus 25, which is good since that means he'll roam the stars faster. Uh, he'll be able to explore the different uh, systems that they go to. Then we've got Glarp, who is uh, got a bonus to propulsion uh, research. So. He's currently researching in engineering. Anytime a propulsion thing comes up, he'll be able to research it faster. We've got Bumpur, our society researcher. He's got a sp increased speed in statecraft. And then we've got Glop, our physics researcher, who just has a generic 
plus 10 research speed. So our physics research should go pretty fast regardless. Um, but let's go ahead and make it even faster by researching quantum theory, which will increase our physics research from researchers by 20%. Then we've got Bumpur with our uh, society research. There are no statecraft ones yet. A little sad, but you know what? We'll do biodiversity studies. And then GLARP, there is no uh, propulsion. So uh, let's keep with the theme here. We'll do nanomechanics. So once these are all researched, um, we'll be able to uh, earn research even faster for the different types. And we can see here that um, because of the way our science is being earned, where is that at? Here we are. We've got 25 society science being generated every turn, 18 physics and 18 engineering. Uh, the 25 science is going into society plus a 2% bonus. So it comes out to um, a total of 50.91 progress per month trying to get to 2000. Uh, GLOP gives us that plus 10% because of Spark of Genius, then the plus 2%, then the stored in the base gives us the 39.61 uh, progress, and then down here uh, our slowest researcher at the moment is GLARP 37.74, which is why this will only take 40 months this will take 51 months, and this will take 53 months. So with all that said, let's go ahead, unfreeze time, and we'll let things move along. Um, I'll zoom out, since we're going to want to see uh, the whole universe here. It's, uh, it's vast. A lot of these, all of these stars are explorable. Most likely there is other life somewhere out there. It's just going to take some time before we find it. And as Sog gets going, you can see he's made it to the edge of our system, and then he flies along the, uh, I forget what they call them, star tracks, why not? Uh, to the next system and he will uh, he will start to hold on did I set him to explore or survey because survey is what we want okay he is going to survey the system then survey here Survey here, survey here, survey here, survey here. We've got that mining station in SOG, so we'll get our construction ship to build the research station as well. And then we're going to use our military ship. Oh, okay, never mind. Can no longer use military ships to explore apparently so we're gonna have our military ship just stay in orbit around SOG uh, we will have our star base build us another science ship and then SOG, or sorry, SOGI. Do we have enough resources now? Hi, Warren. A uh, couple more months we will. So, we can speed up time.
Play on fast for the time being. We're gonna pause on the construction ship. All right. So that means we've got a new science ship. I will go ahead and get the hive wiring up and running. We will take a peek at the science ship we just finished. In a moment here, there he is. We need to assign a leader. We don't have another scientist, so, excuse me, we'll need to recruit one. Recruiting will cost us some money. That's all right. Ah, we got two military theorists and an industry expert. None of them are great to be... Oh, we don't have enough energy. We are short by one month's worth of energy. Well, we're going to have to wait just a moment to get that then. But you know what? We will send our construction ship over to Flurp so that we can make some more energy once we have the materials to build it. There we are. We now have enough to recruit a scientist. We'll go ahead and recruit Dabber. We'll put him in the science ship. Ah, the Voltom Star Assembly. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on ZL1438. They must have been active in this region of space approximately 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifacts. From what they have been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens, who called themselves the Voltom Star Assembly, were worm-like annelids, roughly 3 to 4 meters in length, that communicated with each other primarily through vibrations carried along their segmented bodies. That is interesting. So that will update our situation log. Uh, with the precursors and it gives us a little side mission here that we can do where we want to recover the Voltom artifacts uh, So far we have recovered none of them which makes sense since you know we just discovered that they existed um, We can also see what our victory conditions are um, And at the moment some unidentified Empire will win the game on January 1st 25,000. 2,500, sorry. We are currently in 2,200. So we've got 300 years to overtake them. Um, Alright, so while this science ship is dealing with Zempak, we will have our second science ship explore the systems that it's going to be surveying. We're going to give it a, a big queue of systems to explore. I want to cancel that last order. Ah. I know there's a way to get rid of just one. All right, well, that's fine. <laughs> he can survey that system there. So we'll unpause time. I'm gonna move at the medium pace for right now. We've confirmed the first material traces of intelligent alien life on a foreign world. Remarkable. Alright, so got enough now to build that mining station on Flurp, which will increase our energy production, because at the moment it's at two, which isn't great. And some of that's because we built, I'm going to do that over and over again. We're building the hive warren, so that's increasing how much maintenance we need uh, in terms of money. And so the times with regard to, oh, ruined ring world. The shattered remnants of an ancient ring world encircle the star of the Huntor system. Any planetary bodies that may once have existed here must have been used as building material during this megastructure's construction. No evidence hinting towards who originally built this marvel of engineering has been found, 
but it must have been the product of a very advanced culture. And we can actually zoom on over there to see what they're talking about. So yeah, big old ruined ring around the, the star of Huntor. All right, now we've unlocked our first tradition because we've reached 300 uh, unity. So when we get traditions, we can go either expansion. There are only two possible states for the hive, growth or death. Uh, domination, everything that is not us must serve us, either as servants or as food. Prosperity, we must build a strong, prosperous hive if we are to spread ourselves among the stars. Uh, synchronicity, unity of mind begets unity of purpose. We must strive for synchronized action in all endeavors. Supremacy, the only rule, eat or be eaten. Adaptability, to adapt is to survive and surpass. And discovery, in our ancient past, explorator drones left the safety of our hive to find sites for new nest. Now they travel the stars, driven by the same ancestral yearning. Uh, Synchronicity will increase leader lifespan. Uh, oh, sorry. By just adapting synchronicity, um, our population food consumption will decrease by 10%. Um, and if we get all of the traits, it will give us uh, increased stability on all planets by 5% and unlock an ascension perk which is one of these here that are all locked until we uh, can get them. So for right now, let's take a look at what all of these do. Prosperity, by adopting it, will increase our mining station output by 10%. Domination will reduce the cost to remove those blockers on our worlds. Expansion will increase the colony development speed. Supremacy will increase our starbase capacity and our armage, army damage uh, will increase by 20%. Adaptability, uh, our pop housing usage will be reduced by 10%. And discovery, anomaly research speed is increased by 20%. So based off of how we built our guys, I'm going to go with synchronicity first. Um, just because it will, it fits with these mushrooms that are sort of communal, want to stay in one area, but will take over the minds of other creatures in order to increase their their capacity. We also finished construction of the mining station on Flurp, so we've gone from plus two to plus five. And let's go ahead, pop him onto Glump, which is the uh, moon of Flurp, and we'll build the engineering research station there. And then our uh, home star will be completely uh, renovated in terms of how many uh, stations and whatnot we can build there. Go to Zempec. We've got Zempec 1, which will give us some more minerals. The star itself will give us some more energy. And our scientist is currently finding nothing on the moon of Zempec 6. Well, still got an asteroid and Zempec 5 to explore, so hopefully something good will happen there. Alright. So, Soggy. Oh no. Ah! Crap. Pause. I hit the wrong button. So he's in Zempec, that's where we want him. 
And this guy's there. That's where we want him. Okay. Ah, okay, good. It's just a construction ship. That's that's acceptable. All right. So we've got the second hive warren. Um, that increases our available housing to 17. Still less than what our pop housing needs are. Um, so not super helpful overall. Uh, but our population is still growing at, uh, where's our population rate? I know it's one of these. Here we are, spawning pools. Um, so yeah, our population is increasing at a rate of plus 25%. <laughs> Where does it show our population? Here we are. So we are growing at a base growth speed of 4.5 per month. Three just from the difficulty level we picked, uh, plus 25% because we're hive mind, and plus 25% because of the population jobs we have in the spawning drone. All right, so while that's working, what can we build here? We can build a colony ship. We don't have a place to send it yet, so I'm going to avoid doing that for now. We could build a defense platform. That sounds like a good idea. So let's go ahead and do that. We currently have no defense platforms. And we need to upgrade the starbase before we can make more modules. The current modules we have are a shipyard, which uh, is what lets us build ships, makes sense. The solar panel network, which is giving us some more uh, energy. And the crew gestation chambers, which is giving us uh, less upkeep on our docked ships. So we will set SOG station as its home base and enter orbit on SOG station. So we're not paying as much for that. I put it on the planet by mistake, so that may have been hurting our uh, our energy production there. We can't upgrade the stronghold yet because we both need the starhold technology and a lot more alloys. That's alright. So. We're going to be playing the waiting game a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the speed uh, all the way to the fastest speed. Yes, all right, so Zempec has been finished, and we can see it's not that great of a system. There's only two planets or uh, two celestial bodies that can be used to uh, increase our production of stuff two energy and six minerals. That being said, we're gonna send our buddy out here. Actually, what did it say? Ah, it's not within our borders. We, uh, we will need to build a star base if we want to to build here. And we need more alloys to do that. But I will send him out to Zempec for right now. We've got a partially habitable planet over here in, uh, what is this, uh, Behirium. Uh, it's partially inhabited because we have not surveyed it. And it's not within our borders, so we can't colonize it either. But it is a tropical world. Um, we just don't know anything about it at the moment. Other than that, it's tropical. So that fits within our uh, nature. 
So I think what we might do is instead of sending that construction ship out to Zempak, we'll head over here for now. We've got that defense uh, platform built. That'll help keep us safer. I'm not going to build any more defense platforms just because we want to. Uh... Oh, well, Hunter is a lot smaller of a system. Uh, just a bunch of ruined ring sections. We could theoretically fix the ring world, but why? <laughs> uh, nothing we care about at the moment. Possibly ever, because there's nothing there for us to um, to gain, because there's no people for us to take over. So here we've got a wet world. Uh, an ocean world, as it were. All right. So Uglug, who is currently busy governing the Soggy Sector, gained a level. As did our scientist, Glabber Glubber. Oh, and we've got another tradition. So, we can keep going in the uh, synchronicity uh, tradition. We can get integrated preservation, which uh, provides two additional maintenance drone jobs per maintenance depot. Uh, synchronized agents, which will make our leader upkeep be reduced by 20%. Cloned organs, which will let our leaders live for 20 more years. Now, where is our leader upkeep? So at the moment, our leaders are taking up 12 uh, energy per month. By reducing that by 20%, that'll go down to 10, 9.8, yeah, 9.8. Sorry, yeah, 9.6. So that saves us 2.4 energy and since we're only producing one energy at a time at the moment uh, that essentially gives us a plus 200 percent increase in energy so let's go with that and it did not do what I thought it was going to do oh no, there it is it just took a second to kick in we can make automatic trades but we haven't found the galactic mark yet. So we'll have to deal with just the internal market. What are we making? We're making a crap ton of food. So we will sell 10 food. The minimum sell price is optional, so we'll just leave that there. There we go. And then it slows our food production. Alright, that is a very hard anomaly. Our scientists only skill level 2. We're going to uh, leave it be for now and we'll come back to it. Alright, now selling our food has increased the amount of money we're making. Alright, Athene has been surveyed. Or Hoshfer has been surveyed. And another one. Oh, now there's Athene. So you can see here. Oh, there's Hoshfer. Okay, this was the guy we accidentally told to survey there. Well, he can go here and then survey. And a 
bunch of our scientists just gained more levels, which is great for us. All right, and our alloys should be high enough now. We can't actually build here until it is surveyed, so we'll just have to sit here. So this is a routine anomaly. I'm still gonna hold off on it until we finish surveying all of our systems, and then I'll probably send this guy back uh, to research the anomaly. So we'll just leave it be for now. If we check out our leaders, here they are. Well, again, gonna leave it be until we've surveyed our systems going to pause because we also have another tradition. Things move pretty quickly when we're set to the fastest speed. Um, yeah, so Dabber, he was the one that we hired recently, so he's the only one who hasn't leveled up to level 2 yet. Labber Globber reached skill level 2, but uh, that just increases his research speed slash survey speed. Eventually, we will be able to pick uh, some new traits for them when they level up. All right. So, the, let's see here. Bulwark of Harmony will increase our ship build speed when we are in a defensive war. And increase our ship fire rate when we are fighting within our borders. Uh, this will increase our pop amenities usage by, or sorry, decrease it by 10%. So let's go ahead, get ourselves some more jobs. Got a lot of materials going on. We're just, all right. So he is surveyed. We will send him back along this route to survey those two and then we can go ahead and explore here here and here and then survey them and then once those are surveyed he'll be free to research some anomalies once this guy's done uh, surveying these last three, I'll use him to uh, research some anomalies as well. All right, so we finished biodiversities. We could increase more unity, which will give us our stuff faster. Increase our food production, which is down to five because we're selling ten of it. It's not too bad. Um, we can build, we can unlock the ability to build a hydroponics farm, but because our starbase research is so low, that's not going to help us too much at the moment. Let's go ahead and get more monthly unity. And then we can go ahead and increase our speed back. Take a peek here at SOG. Uh, I believe they've, yep, they've reached the next level, so we can go ahead and let's see here, what do we need? We could use some more energy. Alright, survey the system. We'll just let that keep going. Synaptic nodes. We already have, oh, we've got a hive core. So the synaptic node will increase our synapse drones by two, which will give us more society research, more unit. Um, all right, some more system surveys. Dabbers reached level two. Doing pretty good there. Um, 
what is our current storage cap? Oh, really high. So we don't need to worry about that. Doing pretty good in terms of our research jobs. Let's go ahead. Can we add? There we go. We can add districts. So we're going to add a whole bunch of generator districts. And then we'll add another hive district. synaptic node built too. I don't know if any of this is good, but try it out. And then we will clear this blocker as well. So we spent a whole bunch of our money, finished the technology. This will just generally increase our research speed. Or we could generate some more energy credits. We're doing okay with energy credits at the moment. Let's do research speed. Alright, we're going to leave it be for now. construction ship has to wait until it's fully surveyed. <laughs> technology oh, and we've got our third technology. All right. So we've got afterburners here. It's a propulsion tech. Let's go ahead and do that. Get Glarp, uh, researching something he's good at. Not a whole lot of energy stuff. Uh, Solea is pretty good. And Glumpus, our hive mind leader who is immortal, <laughs> has uh, reached level three. We have surveyed the system. And then that system is surveyed. I'm going to pause real quick so we can build a star base here. And then uh, yeah, so Build a starbase in beer room. We can send a colony ship over this way since it's habitable now that we've organized it. Or organized, researched it, sorry. Um, let's take a quick peek at our edicts. So the cost um, will be uh, 80 influence to map the stars. But if we do that, our survey speed will increase and our anomaly chance will go up by 10%. Um, volatile land clearance we can't actually pick because we are lacking. Uh, this is a specific type of specialty good, volatile moats. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we actually can't pick any of these because we don't have any of those specialty goods. But let's go ahead map the stars for the next uh, 11 and a half years. Our survey speed will increase 
Probably should have had that on from the beginning, but I forgot about edicts. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this game. Alright, so you can see we built the star post and it didn't just give us just that system. It extended out our borders quite a bit to where it almost also got Selea. So the more um, the stronger our I think it's influence the further out our borders go. Um, and we see here Perheum is a really good world for us to get. Lots of uh, ability to get uh, minerals, a good ability to get some energy. It's a little weak on food, but we're doing really good on food. We're, sen we're selling 10 a month and we're still... Oh, it looks like we stopped. No. Yeah, we're selling 10 a month and we're still just getting so much food. Um, and it's got an 80% habitability. Uh, then Hoshfer, which was down here, not nearly as good. 80% habitability as well. Uh, Elthine, which was all the way up here, only has a 60%. Um, lots of space to grow, though. Um, but would take us a long time to do so because of the habitability. And then these two Arctic worlds, while both really large, would make it very difficult for us to uh, to live there. So yeah, Birium, that's going to be where we send our first colony ship, which we will go ahead and build now. And while that's being built, we will head back to Birium so that our construction ship can build a research station there. We're gonna leave it be for now. Again, want to get everybody, uh, all of them, researched. And then we will do this the the surveys. Earth. Well, all surveyed, then we will do the research on the anomalies. Alright. And another tradition. Well, we will reduce our pop amenities by 10%. Which should just make it even faster for us to grow. We're going to go ahead build an outpost over here that's seven energy credits we can get uh, that's going to be really good for us right now since we are struggling to make the credits we need that being said we'll, let's modify this we'll sell a total of 20. that should increase our yeah increases our amount of money there. Alright, so we're going to send him up here to research the level 2 anomaly. Should be more specific because they will just go research whatever they want. <laughs> Alright, so he's going to research there. Then he'll re research there then research here and then research here I'm gonna avoid this seven wow until much later and my scientists are much smarter oh all right so we have discovered the gamma aliens uh, we should proceed with caution.
issues a special project, investigate the Gamma Aliens. We also encountered the Beta Aliens. So, we've got Hostile Aliens. These are the Betas, I believe? Oh, there's just a whole bunch of them. Oh, and then here are the, the other aliens. So that's not great. All right. But it gives us two new situation logs. So when we research these, it's going to divert our research away from our... Uh, That's the word I was looking for. Away from our normal research. So you can see here, he's now busy with the special project investigate the beta aliens. So it's going to make this take a little bit longer to finish. But researching the aliens when we find them is a really good idea. Alright, good. It did not ruin his, his plans. So yeah, I'm going to have him survey that system. Oh, perfect. He's surveying Vitreus now. So yeah, these aliens are the neutral ones, that they weren't hostile. These ones here are very hostile. And they have 700 as their uh, strength. Right, so our fleet currently has 100. So. Let's fix that a little bit, shall we? Let's go to Starbase. Let's build ourselves a few more Corvettes. Each one adds... Where is it? Does not say. <laughs> But we can hold up to 20. We have three currently. I'm going to build as many as they'll let us, or seven. Uh, okay, so it'll let us build five. That's great. Once they're built, we can add them into our military fleet. Our colony ship is up and running. So we can send them to Birum to colonize. And yeah, we'll just. Name it Beerum Prime. I've got no no qualms about that. Our construction ship can then build the two mining stations. One here to get the five and one here to get two. And that will uh yeah, that'll satisfy us for the time being. Let's take a peek at Sagi. Still building those generator districts. We're getting close to... Oh! Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Solea too. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. That's fascinating. So that'll give us some society research when we build a uh, research station there. All right, our menial drones will need some more space, it looks like. I'm guessing that's why it's yellow. Oh, it, I think that's just to let us know we have more jobs we could fill. Well, as our population continues to grow. It will do that. All right. Our colony ship has found a rare patch of open ground in the jungles of Birium Prime and made planet fall. The landing site is surrounded on all sides by lush, veg lush vegetation and sentry drones have been deployed to guard against predators. The ship has been permanently converted into the administration headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. 
the first Thawadian city on an alien world. And we gained a whole bunch of engineering research because of that. So, looks like we can get some more tech drones and menial drones. Which we've... got going eventually here. Go ahead and remove that other industrial wasteland, which will give us some more generator districts and more agricultural districts. And then eventually we'll get rid of the collapsed boroughs as well, which will increase our districts by one. Hop on over to Burium, specifically Burium Prime. So we can see here that it is currently in the process of being colonized. So it's not you drop down and suddenly you have full control of the planet. Now they make you wait a little bit so that they can actually get off the ship, get everything prepared, and all that jazz. Our construction is complete. We finished constructing something with our ship. Oh. Salea C3 is uninhabited, and indeed, uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tall centotaphs carved from some mineral not native to the planet, evidently placed here by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. The monolith's flowing lines deftly chart a history so fantastical it must surely be fictional. Surely. Um, we'll image them for the archives and give us some uh, engineering research. And then our construction ship here. Go ahead and build the research station. Our special project is complete. All right. The reports of strange free-floating crystal-like objects observed in certain systems have been investigated. The ship-sized objects and their slightly smaller but equally crystal-like satellites at first appeared inert, but sudden shifts in their orientation relative to our ships and new energy signatures emerging from within the prisms indicate that they should be regarded as hazardous and approached with caution. We can either attempt to engage with the potentially dangerous objects directly or establish remote surveillance and observe them from a safe distance. Fascinating creatures. All right. We've got another survey here. This one is Dabber. We'll leave it be for now so that he can finish his surveys. Our construction is complete. What did we finish constructing? Okay, so we're... Our construction is complete. Oh boy, everything's going all at once here. All right, so our Thumpus Starfleet is now up to nine Corvettes with 322 military power. Still a far cry from the uh, hostile aliens that we've discovered. We did get a new oh, wrong button. There we are. Uh, we will go ahead and research these guys. It's going to pause our physics research, but that's okay. We're going to advance that along. Where do we want to go next? Well, Elthine will give us some more energy and more minerals. Oh, here we go. A gigantic skeleton. What was previously thought to be a sordid mountains in the southern hemisphere of Birium, uh, 1A, have been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form. The bones have been dated as 3.4 billion years old but our scientists have ruled out that Burium 1A could have supported life on that scale at any point in the moon's history. Science officer Glaber Glaber has prepared a special research project to delve further into this mystery. All right, another research project. All right. 
So, you can see here, puts a little special project there. Our scientist is already here, so we'll have him do the research project. Our construction ship. Go out to Athlean and build us another star base here. Get us that four and three. Speaking of, we are producing things rather fast. Well, we've got 10 production, so that's not too bad. We'll leave everything where it's at at the moment. Ooh, the Arista system will give us a an alloy mining station. Our continued studies of the massive skeletal remains on Burium 1A have managed to shed some light on how the creature ended up on the moon. There are very faint residual energy readings that indicate some kind of dimensional portal existed briefly towards the rear of the skeleton. Science officer Glaber Glaber theorizes that the creature passed through this gateway from another dimension only to quickly perish in the hostile environment of Burium 1A. Why it did this and where it came from are questions that may never be answered. All right. So we now have uh, Glabber Glabber here, ready to do some more research. Let's send him down here to research that level three anomaly. And then we'll send him off exploring. Definitely gonna avoid that. All right, so we will send you to Bitrius to research that anomaly you found there. All right, the space form, the space-born life forms, which we call Tianki, are docile creatures capable of accessing some lower dimension of subspace. They roam from system to system with remarkable ease. They graze on gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants. It is highly unlikely to say the least that this is their only food source, but intake of other nutrients has yet to be observed. They will not attack unless provoked. They can be safely ignored. Well, our only choice here is hunting them would be a net loss anyway. So we'll go ahead and pick that. And so that was like the little, um, amoeba type aliens we had found earlier. Build our mining stations there. I don't care which one gets finished first. But our, our empire is starting to expand quite a bit. We now control four stars. And we've got one planet that's still in the process of being built. We'll upgrade the star base to a star port. Ooh, pirate treasure. This asteroid appears to have been used intermittently as a base by a band of alien pirates roughly 1,000 years ago. A small boarding party entered the base and managed to recover their abandoned treasure hoard. It consisted largely of stolen trinkets and artifacts, but some of it still appears to be of value. These ill-gotten gains shall serve the state. And we just got 500 energy. Fantastic. All right, so we're upgrading Birium Station into an actual starport. The mummified pilot. The mummified remains of a single individual belonging to a previously unknown mammalian species have been found drifting in high orbit above Bitrius III. The being is dressed in what appears to be a flight suit complete with a helmet and may be a fighter pilot that ejected in some ancient battle only to be forgotten and left behind. Our study of the corpse has provided some interesting data, a tragic fate that gives us 150 society research points. All right. I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna send our one science ship to go ahead and survey here and here, and then explore these three before surveying them as well. And we'll send this science ship up this way. I'm just going to have him survey. Not in a rush to explore everything, but knowing where we can go and 
what we can find there will be helpful. Ah, here we are. Here are the Tiankis. They are currently visiting Sog. They are also much stronger than we are. Which is unfortunate, but you do what you can. <laughs> um, yeah, they're like big old jellyfish type guys. Just sort of float around in space. Trying to hunt them would be a waste of our time, so we're not going to. I'm going to go ahead and not build anything else because I don't have any alloys. Virium Prime, nearly uh, halfway there to being fully colonized. Soggy is building us some more synaptic nodes. And we've got another tradition. You know what? Let's increase our leader lifespan. And then the bulwark of harmony will help us be more defensive. Which will be a nice touch. Alright, our construction ship moves pretty fast. Let's see here, we are producing a bunch of minerals already. But I think it might be worth getting Zempak here. We are 18 alloys short. Let's see here, it is a level 3 anomaly. I'm going to leave it be for now. Again, I'd like to get all the surveying done first, then come back and research the anomalies. Our construction is complete. What did... Oh, okay, so our... Uh, our construction is complete. Birium Station has upgraded themselves to a starport so we can actually add some modules once we have some alloys I think what we will do Technology is get it a solar panel network since that will give us alright ah frequency tuning so this is an extra thing we could research because of the event we did with the amoeba race. Um, it will unlock the energy siphon component. Um, but we have a statecraft thing here and this guy is good with statecraft so we're gonna pick that. Making a lot of, uh, a lot of energy. A lot of all of our resources, honestly. So let's hop back into Soggy. We are one population away from being able to uh, leave it be. <laughs> Stop interrupting my train of thought here. We are one population away from being able to unlock another building slot. Um, how are we doing? We've got 27 available housing. We finished our engineering. Let's get ourselves some coil guns. Those sound cool. I'm going to keep it paused because too many things keep interrupting what we want to do with Sagi. Alright. Population. We've got uh, no unemployment. So we've got 15, 20, 29 people working down here and 10 people working up here. We just need more population. Um, is there any way we can increase the rate at which we uh, gain population? Nope, just the spawning drones. We can only have one of them. Which was this one? No. 
Why do I have such a... Uh, there we are, the spawning pools. Uh, we can't upgrade that yet. But, yeah, we'll just leave it as is. And as our population grows, it'll, uh, it'll start filling in those jobs. So we don't really need to do much in Sagi anymore. Getting plenty of food still. We're just gonna keep building outposts so we can keep getting our resources up. Another seven. Oh, this one's an eight. Okay. I was like, why is that seven a different color? It's because it's a different number. <laughs> encountered a new civilization. We've detected the presence of a primitive alien civilization on Wodriax 2 in the Wodriax system. They appear to be in the later stages of a Bronze Age, having mastered early metalworking. Although most of their population is rural, several large city-states had formed. We should consider building an observation post above their world to study them more closely. Oh, we're probably going to do more than just observe them. ship is just killing it. Uh, I think I'll go down here next to get the two and three. And then these worlds up here. So much stuff. Alright. Our colony has our colony has finished uh, being founded here on uh, Burium Prime. It starts with one population. And we need to wait until we get to population 5 to uh, be able to build stuff. We have housing for 4, so we don't need any housing at the moment. Um, our base amenities is 5. Sorry, our available amenities is 3. Our base amenities usage is 5. And uh, our pop amenity usage is 1. So why is it at three available amenities? Hmm. Oh well. Um, nothing much we can do here at the moment. Since we just have to wait for our population to grow. So we're just going to leave them alone. It's a fringe planet. So it gives us uh, increased speed in building our districts. Uh, and our menial drone output is increased by 5%. So there we go. More systems being surveyed. And let's go ahead and finish our synchronicity. We haven't encountered anybody who could attack us, but if we do, we are now in a better position, especially since our ships are so weak. And because we've unlocked 5 of 5, we've increased our stability on all planets by 5%, and we've unlocked an Ascension perk. So let's just take a look at the ones that are available. We have Interstellar Dominion. The stars beckon and we follow. May nothing stand between us and them. Technological Ascendancy. Technologies that would have been indistinguishable from magic mere generations ago are now within our reach. A new age of technology has begun. The Queen Song, One Vision, uh, which is where he shouts fried chicken at the end. Uh, True unity is achieved only when the ultimate goals of a nation and its people are one and the same. After all, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That fits with what we do. Um, so I might go with One Vision. 
Mastery of Nature Although we mastered the nature of our homeworld long ago, the alien biomes we have since encountered present new challenges. They too shall be overcome. Mm, not there yet. Imperial prerogative. As our civilization continues to grow, so its beating heart must also expand. More systems will be placed under our direct control. Executive vigor. There will be no uh, half measures or compromises when implementing the edicts decided upon by our government. We go all the way or not at all. Uh, that fits with our hive mind sort of thing. What the hive mind says, the hive mind gets. Transcendent learning. Our society must change its approach towards learning. And by doing so, our best and brightest will be able to reach a completely new level of achievements. Mm, doesn't fit. Shared destiny, which is unlocked because we got the syn uh, synchronicity. As we reach for ever greater heights, we must leave behind those who have loyally served us. The glorious future of our empire was always meant to be a shared destiny. Uh, yeah, it doesn't fit either. Let's go with one vision that fits our hive mind sort of state pretty well. Our construction ship has finished there. So let's send him over here to Thuban. Our influence is getting a little on the low side. I'm gonna leave all anomalies be for now. Our map to stars edict is still going. Lasts for another four years, so we're doing good there. Oh, all right. So. The crystalline entities are probably alive. A perhaps more descriptive name for them is silicate animate matter, as they have little in common with biological or traditionally artificial life. The entities do not seem to mate, and we have yet to observe any crystals that are recognizably older or younger than others. Contrary to an early hypothesis, the shifts in hue between individual crystalline entities seem to be related not to their age, but to their latent internal charge which can be violently unleashed, and it appear as if those sporadic fluctuations in this charge alter the reactive properties of the crystal. That sounds potentially useful. Crystal focus modifier added, giving the following effects, uh, plus 5% energy credit from jobs. What are the military applications? Gives us the research option to do crystal infused plating and gives us plus 50% progress towards crystal infused plating. I don't think we're a very warlike race, so I'm gonna go with it. it sounds potentially useful. Let's see here, drone campaign. We're able to produce new worker drones at an even quicker pace. I think that is very good for us. The learning campaign uh, increases our leader experience and the war drone increases our army damage our military is not going to go anywhere for for the time being let's go ahead and increase our leader experience why not we've got plenty of food might as well use it we're going to leave that anomaly alone we are going to go back to sog station here We are going to build a few more, oh, we're going to build one more Corvette. <laughs> we're going to do nothing else there. Birium Station. Our construction is complete. Give it a turn Our here. Is complete. We can get it a shipyard. Mm, don't think that's super necessary. Give it a second solar panel network. Again, not that exciting. This will increase our naval capacity. Um, where is our naval capacity at? Here we are. So our naval capacity is 10. We can, or is 20. We currently have 10. Um, 
We have no Titan or Colossus. I don't know what that means. But we can have one of each of those. Uh, we can have one more Starbase eventually. I think for right now, we don't need to increase our naval capacity. We don't need a second shipyard. Let's get another solar panel network. And our construction ship. Go ahead and build some more mining stations. And our scientists just keep getting smarter. And our systems keep getting surveyed. So we've got a lot of areas to work with here. But I'm going to take a quick eh, five minute break here, refill my tea, get myself stretched a little bit. Uh, I recommend you all do the same. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in about five minutes.
All right, I am back. So let's go ahead, get back into it. Got our science ships surveying things. Our construction is complete at the Barium Starbase. We're producing 27 credits now. That's fantastic. Our construction, is complete. Our construction ship. Hmm. Oh, geez. All right. So many things going on at once. Asteroid sighted. Our deep space tracking arrays on Birium Prime have made an alarming discovery. A large asteroid is heading towards the planet on a direct collision course. Should it impact the surface, the consequences would be disastrous. The asteroid must be destroyed before it is too late. All right, we're going to pause because that sounds dire. <laughs> um, we're going to leave the uh, thing be. Here is the asteroid. We are going to send our ships to go destroy it. We will head to our situation situation log. See that the asteroid is coming. We just gotta hope that uh, our ships get there before uh, it hits our planet. Our star base helping out, doing some long range damage here. See it firing off its guns as fast as it can. And then in comes the cavalry here. Oh, just destroying it like crazy. The asteroid that was approaching Burium Prime on a collision course has been destroyed. With their doom averted, our jubilant citizens on the planet have taken to the streets in celebration. A scan of the remaining fragments has also revealed that the asteroid consisted largely of valuable minerals. We have collected what we could. Excellent. So we've gained 800 and 23 minerals. We're going to send these guys back to home base. There is a button for that. There we are, return. All right. So Burium is saved. Let's send our... Where do we want to go? Let's send Burium up this way. If we could produce more alloys, that would be nice. Let's uh, let's go to the market here. Let's buy alloys. Yeah, three sounds good. That should hopefully not destroy our economy here. All right, no statecraft. So let's go ahead. Learn that energy siphon thing that we were we discovered earlier. Science ship has just one more system to survey. We are receiving a transmission from the independent space station of the Curator Order. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Interesting. Hi, Curator Trick of the tile our opinion is neutral or their opinion of us is neutral first contact with the curator order curator order greetings star travelers we are the curators our ancient order was established eons ago by the various galactic powers in ascendancy at the time we were dedicated towards the Preservation of all knowledge in an effort to safeguard the galaxy from descending into a yet another dark age of mass extinctions and barbarism. We failed. Few of us remain today, but we are no less committed to our sacred mission than our predecessors were. We are willing to share some of our knowledge with you for a price. Well met. We will soon learn all of your knowledge by taking you over. All right, our research speed is increased by 5%. Colony development speed, that would have been nice earlier. Here we are. Survey speeds and automatic exploration. Perfect. Got a 
another. Built the mining station first, and then the research stations. Upgrades available for clock station. Let's go ahead and do that. So the curator think tank, by constructing a research facility, facility entirely focused on learning from and cooperating with the curators, we are able to make significant contributions to our scientific progress. Interesting. These powerful jammers interfere with enemy ship-to-ship -ship communications, making it difficult to coordinate fleet movements. Again, we haven't really encountered any enemies yet, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, this disrupts something or other. Oh, the shields of enemies. Ah, we need a curator enclave in our system and a diplomatic agreement with them. So we can't build that yet. Target uplink computer uh, increases our ship weapons range. Resource silo increases our resource storage by 2000. And this decreases our ship upkeep cost. Since our ships are staying at SOG, that's not too important. Let's go with the resource silos. Uh, Especially since we are producing quite a bit these days. And we've got a new uh, tradition to take. Alright. We are doing a lot of surveying. We have one colony. The potential for a second at Hoshfer. I think I think maybe we increase our prosperity. Uh, something that's going to make us increase our population faster, I think, is, is even better. Maybe adaptability? Nah, expansion. It's time that we start expanding out into the universe. Our spores are ready. Let's see here. This is potentially habitable. What does that mean? So... We wouldn't be able to use much of the resources. Our population growth would be slow. Our upkeep and amenity usage would be high. Not grand. Not bad either. I mean, that's a lot of space we will eventually be able to use. don't have the alloys for it though so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that just yet I might go take Hoshfer next all right so with the system surveyed let's go here first and then here And here and here, followed by here, uh, and then was it the first one that had? Yeah, and then here. All right, that should keep our scientists busy for a little while. Oh, here we are, here's the uh, curator order. 
out in Zalaman. Looks like we got to explore all of this area over here before we can get to where they are. I think that just means it's going to be a while before we can take them over. <laughs> Alright, Birium. Let's get you a defensive platform too. Although it is difficult to accept, all indications point towards asteroid GF53BRF being a corporalite, a piece of fossilized feces from some kind of massive life form. It appears to be almost a billion years old, and much of the fossil's original organic composition has been replaced by mineral deposits. Our scientists are baffled as to what kind of creature could have produced something like this. Remarkable. Alright, we'll add a defense platform there. Does eat up a lot of our alloys, but that's okay. construction ship has finished. We're going to move him over here. We're going to take Hoshfer because it has the habitable world of Hoshfer 3. And then we'll leave it be for now. Uh, and then eventually we might learn to be able to colonize uh, the Arctic planet. While conducting surface scans of Bazanak 3, science officer Glaber Glaber and the crew of the spore Gleg Lorsch discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet, and exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We have prepared a special project to translate the text. Alright. So there is no time. Uh, limit on the special project, so that's great. Ooh, all right. During the survey of Gauzer X, the spore luminator discovered deposits of rare crystals. These crystals have properties that make them extremely effective at focusing laser beams, and they are also a critical component in most advanced electronics. In addition, many cultures treasure them as decorations and adornments. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. All right, so rare crystals have been discovered there. Map to Star's Edict affecting our empire has expired. Well, that's no good. Let's renew it. <laughs> Sagi has made it to 40 population. Still struggling to fill our roles there. How's our maintenance drone jobs looking? Uh, we're doing fine there. I'm not going to worry about that. Precious Moon, a more detailed scan of one of the many natural satellites orbiting the gas giants, Santrinius 2 has revealed a deposit of precious metals and minerals that was overlooked in the initial survey. Although the moon is very small, it has a stable orbit around its primary and appears tectonically stable. An excellent find. Okay. What should we build here? Should we build anything? Leave it be for now. I think... Actually, Foundry Drone is not a bad idea. Again, leave it be. Alright, Swirling Shadows. Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across uh, Santrianus 3b's face. They are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere. Hinged, or rather jointed, 
to allow for a small degree of articulation. Science officer Glaber Glaber is as yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or what pur possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow casting might serve. All right, adds some more research. Technology conceived. Got a new technology. Our coil guns are done. Uh, nothing in his specialty, but this will decrease the amount of money it costs to build Corvettes. So let's do that, since that's our only ship at the moment. And let's go ahead and upgrade all of our ships. Oh, our science ship here has finished doing all of its research, so we will have him to all three anomalies in Gauzer. And then the one up here in Jerupe. And our fleet, as it's getting upgraded, is becoming more powerful. Worm has strengthened. For some reason, someone has towed an asteroid into a stable orbit around Gauzer 6. The massive engine sections and braking thrusters can still be found on the surface, although they have long since been rendered inoperable. Whoever did this also mined the asteroid for minerals, but these operations were seemingly abandoned shortly after they began. Interesting. Gives us some more research points there. Through hard work and experience, scientist Staver has developed new skills. Daver now has the expertise field manipulation trait. What does that do? So we go to our leaders, we go to Daver. Who's up here? So if he was a regular researcher, he would give us a, a bonus to field manipulation, as well as military theory. Does not help. <laughs> All right, we're gonna avoid upgrading anything for the time being. So I want to be able to build a star base here. Abandoned amusement park. The structure of Tanafir Six are not yet are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Glaver Glaver notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that, to the builder's alien eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array, or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us the Wadians, it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. Intriguing. So we've gained some more research. build a station there and then we're gonna hold off because we're gonna want to colonize Hoshfer 3 but we need some more alloy. An abandoned life pod was detected in close orbit to Gosser 7. It is covered in scorch marks presumably from when the pod's mothership exploded and preliminary scans suggest it was built more than 5,000 years ago. The crew of the spore illuminator managed to open the pod, revealing the withered remains of a reptilian alien clad in a resplendent uniform. Clutched in one of its claws was a small picture of another individual from the same race, possibly a mate or revered leader. More society research, I'll take it. Our construction is complete. All right, Sagi has finished building. Uh, there it is, the other alloy foundries. So, oh, we're actually losing money now. So I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pick our research. No statecraft again, so that's unfortunate. Our naval capacity can be increased by two. 
Let's get more food, because then we can sell more on the market. Uh, I'm going to cancel the buying of alloys so that we can start making money again. Where's a good system? Ah, here we go. Science officer Daver reports that the luminous waves coursing through the ice that blankets Gauzer 9 is of alien origin. Some ancient battle has deposited scattered wreckage of an alien fighter on the frozen planet, and only the exposed core of its main weapon remains intact. It seems this alien race used lasers somewhat more advanced than the ones currently in use by the waiting and tech, uh, fleets, and the fizzling innards periodically discharge low-powered lasers into the ice of Gauzer 9. The planet's harsh climate prevents the laser from actually melting the ice, allowing the chili matrix to act as a brilliant prism. We could use that technology. technology. We now know blue lasers. Just something that we can use to uh, bump up our uh, fleet some more. Orbital Speed Demon. Attempts to scan the object in high speed orbit of EUD. Uh, 1138 have been unsuccessful. The object quickly falls below EUD's 1138's horizon, and the Spore Gleglorsch uh, instruments are simply unable to keep up. While EUD 1138's gravitational pull is strong, that alone does little to explain the object's extreme momentum. Either the object itself possesses some extraordinary properties, or there is some gravitational phenomenon at work here. The object's velocity appears to be increasing over time, and science officer Glaber Glaber su suspects that it may soon throw it out of orbit, even without outside interference. So we can dispatch a drone and attempt to latch onto the object to reduce its momentum. We can eject debris to collide with the object, hopefully stopping it in its orbital tracks. Or we can just move away from it. I say we try and slow it down. The drone successfully intercepted the unknown object's orbit. By latching onto the object and then thrusting in reverse, little by little, the drone was eventually able to direct it to Spore Gleglorsch for retrieval. The object looks to be some sort of box, constructed of alien material. Vein-like ridges meander along its side, congregating at the top in some type of sphere-shaped mechanism. We can only guess at its contents. We could open it. We could study it, or we can get rid of it. We're opening it. <laughs> Alright, situation log. Let us research. Cracking open the alien box. Alright. Let's go here and do the special research project. Then I missed an anomaly, so you'll go back here and research that anomaly. We've got enough alloy now to colonize Hoshfir. So we'll do that. Then we got a new tradition. New colonies start with one additional pop. That'll be nice. Uh, Starbase influence cost reduced by 10%. If it reduced the alloy cost, that would be a given. Mm. But this also increases pop growth speed once we do that one. So one mind it is. Uh, we will fly over here. might need to get a second construction ship going here. Uh, I want to increase my alloy production before I do that. Further scans suggest the machine is still operational, though its purpose remains entirely unclear. Science officer Daver has never seen anything like it. Some of its materials look familiar but most are strange and utterly alien as the design of its components. The machine has what appears to be a console, with one item in particular standing out, a large crooked lever of unknown material.
All right, Kronk, pull the lever. As our scientists pulled the lever, the machine emitted a huge blast of energy that multiplied in shockwaves, twisting and rippling through the void, tearing open a wormhole in Salea. After the residuous energy diffused, the wormhole and the immediate area around it settled and now appear to be stable enough for safe passage. As for what awaits us on the other side, our scientists are not so sure. The machine itself has since returned to its inactive state and no longer gives off any anomalous readings. Ooh. All right, so we can get plus seven physics research all the way here in Jerupe. Or we can take it apart, gain experience, gain some physics research, and gain materials. Nah, let's research it. That sounds cool. All right, hold on. Where's the wormhole? Oh, do I not get to explore the wormhole? Well, that's boring. Or did it open a wormhole somewhere else? Yeah, I wanted to go through a wormhole and see where it took me. Oh, well. All right. Let us do some more exploration. Survey those three there. And then those two. And yeah, I know I still have this anomaly to research, but I want to get a little bit higher in level before I, I attempt it. At the moment, they're both level four. Uh, Blabber Globber's almost a five, which is the best, and I'll probably have him do the the anomaly research. All right. Speaking of Glabber Globber, he's managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Bazinac Three. The text contains a staggering amount of data, and the mural evidently serves as some sort of low-tech library. It describes, in broad terms, the collected technological knowledge of an alien civilization that dominated this region of the galaxy some 80 million years ago. A lot of it is already known to us, but the data does contain several promising leads for technologies we had yet to consider. There's enough data here to keep our scientists busy for decades, but we will need an orbital research facility to continue the translation efforts. Awesome, all right. Well, I guess we're gonna head this way to get science. We've got a new incoming transmission. The Xanir Protectors. Uh, they are a stagnant ascendancy. And they are holy guardians. Oh, looks like, yeah, there's their borders. Uh, another child. Know that we are the Xanir Protectors. The chosen people of this galaxy. Respect our holy places and we will refrain, from, and we may refrain from annihilating you. They sound pleasant. We greet you as one, Xanar. Our theoretical models have long suggested the existence of other intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. This theory has now been confirmed. It's been confirmed a couple of times at this point. <laughs> the alien political entity that we have encountered appears to be an old one, possessing technology that is far advanced of our own. Caution is advised. They are different. All right. So, I believe, yeah, they have overwhelming power, even though they are a small uh, civilization. And the reason they are overwhelming is that they are an ascendant race. They've been around a long, long time. All right, our governor, Uglug, has developed an architectural interest trait. Let's see what that means. Um, but yeah. They won't let us through their borders, so we will never be able to see what that is uh, until we research a way to travel without having to use the star lanes. And hopefully they are content to not uh, become aggressive because our current fleet strength is 
pitiful. <laughs> Let's see here. What was I doing? Right, construction ship. Where is he heading? He's over here. Let's build the outpost there. Another strategic research uh, resource discovered. The Spore Illuminator has discovered a previously unknown strategic resource on 1337915, dubbed Volatile Motes. These preternatural particles contain a tremendous amount of energy, which could be exploited in energy production, as fuel or even as explosives. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. Alright. Well, we might want to consider expanding all the way south here. South. Uh, all the way down to here. While approaching Wodriax 3, the spore Gleg Lorsch suddenly received a glancing hit by several passing mass driver rounds. The projectiles were billions of years old, and based on their trajectory, they appeared to be stray rounds fired from a neighboring galaxy. After missing their intended target, they continued on their journey for untold millennial, millennia until today. The rounds we have recovered are of an advanced design despite their incredible age. Incredible. We've earned more uh, engineering research. And Glaber Glaber has developed new skills. He's got the biology expertise. Mm, not helpful. All right. He's level five, though. He cannot get any more levels. His archaeology skill is plus five. Let's go ahead. We'll send him down here to do research on seven. And let's see what that gets us. All right. So our construction ship will build us a mining station and then build us an observation post. So we can start seeing what these primitives have to offer us. All right, and because we are generating alloys much faster, we'll go ahead and build another construction ship. I've mined Glumpus is now level five. This construction ship is done. Let's go ahead and build a star base there. I want to get that energy production first. We are actually losing food production. Our population is growing that fast. Let's real quick take a peek at Birium. He currently has no unemployed. All are working. That's fantastic to hear. Let us get spawning pools going, and we will build a few agricultural districts here. Um, we'll go back to the market, and we're going to reduce how many we're selling to 15 for now. It'll reduce how much money we're making, but it'll increase our food production, which will be great. So we have our observation post. We do. So when you build an observation post, it starts with passive observation. They're studied unknowingly from a safe distance, and every effort is made to avoid cultural contamination. Meh. We're going to do aggressive. Uh, the natives are aggressively studied and live specimens are frequently collected to learn as much as possible about their biology and culture. And eventually, we're going to aim to get the, uh, where's the one where we can just assimilate them. <laughs> uh, 
maybe covert infiltration or technological enlightenment. Eh, we'll figure it out. But for right now, we're going to aggressively observe them. And our construction ship is going to head up here to get us another outpost. We will leave that be for now. We're going to, have to stop what he's doing because he won't be able to go into this territory. But we will survey these three here. And then I'll have him research some anomalies. Alright. No statecraft, again, but population growth speed, that's what we'll take. Which construction ship is sleeping? This one. All right, let's get our mining stations up and then our research stations. This guy is still working on building the, the outpost. And SOG. Sorry, Sagi has an open building slot. Still working on getting all of our population up and running. Oh, we've got, yeah, where is that? <laughs> Let me just keep hitting things. There we are, show planetary stuff. I'm gonna eliminate that. this oh no it looks like it just automatically gets things there cool none of this is super helpful um, we've got amenities going so we're doing fine there I don't think we need anything at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it be. Our, Our empire is expanding. Doing okay in terms of production. So it's just a matter of uh, keeping everything going. Anomaly. We'll leave it be for right now. And Saggy Saggy or Saggy Saggy. I forget what his name is. What is his name? Oh, Glabber Glabber. <laughs> is in the midst of researching at more regard. Our construction is Alright, let's just keep getting these uh, outposts. We can upgrade our fleet here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The spore Gleg Lorsch finds a disturbing tangle of technology hidden in a deep crater on the asteroid's surface. Evidently, someone has, with rather simple means, managed to stabilize a one-way wormhole, and science officer Glaber Glaber quickly asserts that the asteroid is the exit point. The other end opens up somewhere in uncharted space some light years away from a black hole, and small quantities of dark matter are leaking, being siphoned through the wormhole. Whoever set this up seems to have abandoned the operation. All right, we found a dark matter deposit. So, uh, 
previously unknown strategic resource, dubbed Dark Matter. This exotic substance has many properties that seemingly defy several natural laws. It could potentially revolutionize the sciences. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. I agree. All right. And can we build some ships? We can. And we will. <laughs> I think I'll get to like 15 Corvettes. Should be decent for our initial fleet. I'm able to build a star base. What? All right, we'll build that, and then we'll try to build a thing there. All right. Let's go and research that level eight anomaly. Our construction is complete. We'll move here to get an outpost. We finished the Corvette uh, stuff, so that's perfect. Again, nothing super helpful. Um, we can increase how much minerals we produce. That could be pretty good. Um, improve our Corvette holes. Give ourselves some armor. Let's go with the Corvette hole. And we want the population growth speed increased. Our construction is complete. Okay, we'll move here. Actually, let's move here. More alloy. Oh, all right. At long last, our scientists have penetrated the outer material of the alien box. The box holds three small, liquid-filled vials, one red, one blue, and one green. The liquids are less alien than their container, and our scientists have identified them as primed gene modification mediums. For reasons beyond our understanding, the solutions are quickly deteriorating outside their alien container but there should be enough time to synthesize and apply one of them to our species. It has been confirmed that its effects would be positive, but exactly how remains to be seen. Ooh. So we can use the red one, the green one, or the blue one. Or we can sell them. I personally like the color green. So that's what we're going to do. The green gene modification solution has been successfully administered to the Thawadian people. Based on preliminary observations of early subjects, the solution appears to uh, improve our ability to adapt to our environment. Excellent! We now have the bioadaptability trait. That's actually really good for our, uh, our species. Here we are, species. Um. Here we are, bioadaptability. It increases our habitability by 5%, which means something like here, or 60, it's now up to 65%, and it reduces those penalties that um, comes with that. So that's fantastic. Leave it be for right now. I'm gonna build the star base there. Our construction is complete. And we'll have this guy build all the mining stations and then build the research station. So our science is all the way up to 122. That's pretty good. Only thing I'm not feeling great about is how little energy we're we're producing still. But we'll get there. Our construction is complete. Alright, let's build ourselves some mining stations. 
The drone campaign has expired. Uh, we'll activate it again. Get our um, population growing some more. All right. Our learning campaign has expired. I'll also increase that. We've got our new technology, which increases our speed yet uh, some more. We could use some more food though, so we're gonna go ahead do the gene cor gene crops and go from there. All right. So this guy, we will have him research that one. Research that one. Research this one. And then come back and research that one. All while Glabber Glabber goes and researches this level 8. Modriax 2. Ethic changes. There's been a sweeping change in the ways of the primitive lag and choose since we began aggressively observing members of their species all over Wodrax 2. Their hatred of our abduction shuttles has made them extremely mistrustful of anything they consider foreign, while at the same time strengthening the bonds they feel towards their own culture and species. Interesting. We've made them xenophobic. <laughs> We have detected what appears to be a naturally occurring subspace phenomenon on the edge of the Silea system. A rift in the very fabric of space-time has formed there, creating a wormhole that, our science units speculate, may provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. Depending on where the second wormhole is located, this could potentially allow ships to travel from one end of the galaxy to the other in a matter of days. Unfortunately. This wormhole, like the vast majority of its kind, is inherently unstable. Any vessels foolish enough to pass through it would be ripped apart in seconds. If only we could somehow stabilize the wormhole. Where was that? Oh, oh Soleus, that's where, okay. We have encountered some form of alien vessels in the Basniak system. These strange objects have been flagged as Theta aliens until we can learn more about them. We should proceed with caution. Well, we'll go back to our situation log here and investigate those, uh, those aliens. As suspected, the asteroid GR9000 holds within it a great mass of metal and does indeed hide some manner of machinery. The gathered data clearly shows that its constituent parts contain great quantities of stored energy, but its purpose remains unknown. We can proceed carefully to gently excavate the asteroid, or we can probe it to retrieve a sample. I think we're going to be cautious. Caution proved well in order. Hidden inside GR9000 was a host of old mining drones programmed to attack on site. Science officer Dabber fortunately detected this early and was able to jam the drone's sensors long enough to disable them. The drone's cores are old indeed, but retain vast amounts of energy for siphoning. Awesome, that makes a plus four down here uh, in Yerba. That makes it a very good system to take eventually. All right, so Salea has a wormhole. Um, you might want to boost this guy to be a starport so we can have some more defenses. While that is happening, Hoshver has finished. It's a forge world, so the foundry build speed is faster and metallurgist upkeep is lower. It's going to be a while before we can utilize that, but that's okay. Um, it's currently running a deficit of six food and six energy, but as we increase our population and 
increase its abilities. That will change. Still waiting on, on some more population here. Our construction ships. Uh, we'll fly one here. And fly here. And actually build that since it gives us the four energy here. We are receiving a transmission from the Galactic Genonosian Commiserate. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Diplomatic channels are now open and all hostilities between us have ceased for the moment. Interesting. They're slug people! <laughs> That's awesome. I represent the Galactic Genogan Commiserate. Our elected leader, Commissary General uh, Dashlug, hopes for peaceful relations with your people, but know that we are more than capable of defending our way of life. We greet you as one, General Logans. We are receiving another transmission. The Bacata Stellar Industries. They are a mega corporation. Greetings. I speak for Chief Executive Officer Igvi Azut and the wealthy elite of the Bacata Stellar Industries. We are always looking for new trading partners among the many diverse and delightful alien nations we encounter as our ships explore the galaxy. Uh, cool. All right. So we can see here, this is the Galactic Jindogan Commiserate. And down here is the Bacata Stellar corporations. We have discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around Avaconia 2A. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting engineering design choices. An interesting, albeit primitive design. Gives us some more uh, engineering research there. All right. So it doesn't look like we've got much further we can expand this direction before we run into the borders of our friend here. Um, right, Saleo. That's being upgraded, perfect. And we should upgrade the one in Hosper too. Though we're gonna need some more alloy to do that. Our construction is complete. All right, let's go ahead and build that mining station. So now do we have the intergalactic markets? Nope. We do not. That's alright. We've got... Uh, oh, perfect. Alright. So our survey speed is faster and we can just set to automatic exploration. Which is what we'll do after we finish researching our anomalies here. Alright. This will let us increase our energy production. Fusion reactor will unlock advancement in several different directions. So let's do that, even though there was one there that would specifically give us energy production. All right. After identifying an anomaly in the gravity well of DTLF 3PO, the spore illuminator has discovered the shattered wreckage of an ancient ore super freighter buried deep within the asteroid's crust. It must have carried a full load when it crashed, and the asteroid's mineral wealth has been revised accordingly. Fantastic. All right. So we got three more energy there. Or minerals, not energy. Still helpful. All right. Our fleet getting closer to being able to take on the, the hostile creatures there in Zedrin. Hosfer, we want to upgrade their starbase into a starport. 
construction is complete. Which gives us not enough. I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna go to Gowser next. That'll let us secure all this area up here. And we can go back and fill that in as time permits. Oh man, he's almost done. Here we are. Voltom Virtual Reality Center. Voltom engineers at some point built a massive orbital complex near Ethlene 6 dedicated to computer research. Strangely, they seem to have ignored the normally popular field of artificial intelligence to focus exclusively on virtual realities and massive computer simulations. Most of the complex has been ruined by weapons fire and micrometeoroids, but what remains is in remarkable condition given the station's age. All right, we've got a new uh, project here. So we're gonna start that right away. Signs of battle. There's clear evidence that a massive space battle took place in close orbits of Abaconia 3C at some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface on one side of the moon is pockmarked with craters from stray weapons blasts, and scans from the spore illuminator have picked up several hulks on the ground. Though these wrecked ships are all in very poor condition, the fact that anything remains at all after the damage they must have sustained is a testament to their advanced design. Science Officer Daver is preparing an expedition to sift through these derelict holes for any valuable technology. All right. Well, we'll start that research project right away as well. So we're doing pretty good with our research. My alloy production is still pretty weak making it a little difficult to keep expanding our starports. The Placid Leviathan still just sort of roaming around, eating from the gas giants. Alright, let's just go ahead and build all our mining stations and then build the research stations. Alright, the archaeologists investigating the Voltom orbital complex above Ethlene 6 have stumbled upon an interesting find. They managed to recover a partial copy of what apparently what was apparently a fairly popular multi-user virtual reality game enjoyed by billions of Voltom across their empire. Although the game takes place in a fictional and highly satirized version of their contemporary society, it has proved an invaluable source of information on both their language and customs. All right, we found one of the Voltom artifacts and gained a bunch of physics research. And a second project completed. The team under Science Officer Dabber has finished their expedition of Avaconia 3C and returned to the Spore Illuminator. Thankfully, the Starship graveyard on the surface proved to be a technological treasure trove. Studying the remains of these vessels has advanced our research in certain fields by several years. Uh, and there are yet things to discover. A permanent science outpost in orbit would be a great boon to our Starship engineering efforts. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and set him to automatic exploration now. We're going to move him over to here. We're going to set the same thing. So I'm hoping when they're set to automatic exploration, they'll survey as well. Otherwise, that's just a, a waste of a button. <laughs> Our construction is complete. We flee the oh, where are we fleeing? A ruby swarm. Okay, great. Some more prisms. So it looks like we might be fully locked in down here. Alright, our science ship got away though. They're all the way up to 1k. Oh no. Alright. We're gonna send you survey that system. Yes, I, I figured it would do that. Which is why I'm sending you all the way up there. <laughs> our construction ship. 
Yeah, it has enough. We'll build a star base here. I'm running low on influence too. That's all right. Don't really have anything that we want. We've got the one of six Voltom artifacts. We'll continue with uh, expansion. I was just talking about how we're running low on influence, so this will lower the influence cost. Um, and then we'll do Starbase Upkeep, which should increase our money. And then Colony Development Speed will be the last one. Where... What are you doing? I told you... Oh. Alright, well, come up here and survey that. You're heading there. You're heading there. Okay. Everything makes sense now. Build a mining station here. Map the stars has finished. I think I'm going to... Uh, now I'm going to spend it. Especially since we're going back to surveying. Move him to Pujo. Our fleet is up to 573. Let's go ahead and build a few more of them. There we go. That'll get us to the 15 I wanted to get to. Fill in this area back here, mainly because I don't want to annoy these guys. Oh, excuse me. Alright, so we're up to 716. We can just edge out one of these guys. I don't know which one was the really strong one, but we don't really want to run into the two at a time. All right, our farmers will be building some more, more food for us. Building, creating more food for us. Um, increase our naval capacity. Is our ship starting experience a little higher? Now let's get our starbase capacity up. So right now we're at our full four. So if another wormhole appears somewhere, we're going to want to... Alright. So we surveyed that. We will go ahead and set you to Auto Explorer. actually going to build my starbase there because if these guys get here first I'm locked in I won't be able to go up this way anymore so I want to build one here and then get all the way up to here at some point too because if we don't we'll be stuck and the rest of the universe is going to be much harder to explore until I can get rid of these guys. And I'm a ways off from being able to do that. Alright, another technology. We can upgrade our Corvettes. Alright, no, uh, nothing super helpful with uh, propulsion. So we'll do the geothermal fracking to increase our minerals production. We could probably start selling some minerals on the market. I think we're doing okay at the moment. 
And with my food going up, let's increase how many we sell there. And you know what? I will sell a little bit of minerals on the market. I'll sell 20 as well. And then we will buy some minerals. Let's get ourselves to an even 40 there. And that should help us out. All right. We are able to get the... Oh, boy. We're going to be cutting it close. We're going to build the mining stations and the research stations while we wait for uh, our science ship to finish surveying this. Alright, so this will increase our energy production with the technicians we already have. Um, yeah, I think that's our best play, our best play right now. Alright, so our construction ship here, I'm actually going to uh, tell it to stop what it's doing. And go build that star base right away. Essentially just racing against these guys to keep ourselves from being locked in. Oh no, alright. We've discovered the Lambda aliens. So let's go ahead and research that. And we're kind of stuck at the moment. Um, I'm going to upgrade these guys. Gotta get these Lambda aliens to not be hostile. Hopefully. We're gonna send our fleet to go deal with some aliens. Oh, okay, ancient mining drones. The deep space drones we have encountered appear to be workers and custodians of an autonomous orbital mining operation. That is not good news. Um, judging by the state of the processing equipment, these sites were established millennia ago and then soon abandoned by all but the drones themselves. The drones possess powerful mining lasers and make obviously threatening, if not outright hostile, overtures towards us when approached. They may only be old drones, but they should be kept under close watch. Uh, let's go ahead and establish a listening post. Which will finish in 54 months, so that's these guys here. And because they're there, we are kind of locked in, which is not great. Let's go ahead and build a star base there. Where's my other guy? It's right here. We'll build a... Oh, we're lacking influence now. All right. Well, just have to wait until our influence increases. But I think we were able to establish a rather large empire already. We only have three uh, colonies. It's a little on the weak side. That's okay. Our administrative capacity is at 30. Aha, okay. So we're going to zoom in here. We're going to fly down this way. Oh, okay. Oh, oh crap. We engaged two at a time. I did not want to do that. Oh no. Oh no. I can't get him to retreat. Because there's six days out. Well, I just lost my entire fleet. That sucks. Oh man. Alright. Well, it looks like seven of them survived. 
Sog. Start start rebuilding. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go with the full 20 this time. I was hoping to only engage one at a time, but it doesn't look like that's going to be an option. Alright, these two guys, we want to merge. Wait, what? Why do I have more of them now? Our construction is complete. Okay, great. I want to... We have surveyed the system. Alright, pause. <laughs> Too much stuff is going on at once here. Alright. These guys. Transfer ships. Transfer all. Transfer ships. Transfer all. It's just making new... What the heck is going on here? Fleet manager. Alright. Tumpus fleet. you get all no no oh my goodness disband that fleet yes disband this fleet yes why is fleet management so difficult disband no I don't want to disband the the, the ships I want to going on here. There we go. I've got all 12 in Flurm. I would prefer... Alright. Where's my fleet manager at again? <laughs> Son of a gun. Fleet manager. Alright, I guess we don't have Tumpus anymore. Everything's in Flarem. Let's move you to 15. Reinforce. Disband this one. Agree. Disband this one. Agree. Disband this one. Agree. Alright. Let's actually just take this all the way to 20. Unpause. Check our traditions. Starbase upkeep. That's what we want. Give us some more money. Oh man, that is just so unintuitive. Our construction is complete. Alright, then once we get to 20, I'll get a leader and then we will try that again. <laughs> We managed to do some damage at least, so that's helpful. Build a mining stations and research station. Ah, oh boy. Why is this guy... Oh, yeah, okay. That's fine. This guy can build a starbase. Oh, alright. 
Osfer's got some unemployment. That's not good. Let us build an alloy foundry. And then we'll build a housing district. So they got some place to live. Birium. They could use some housing. We'll get a hive warren going. Sog. Sog, we'll get some housing going. There we go. Our population's doing pretty well. Let's go ahead and we'll also get a maintenance depot. It's starting to run a little low on amenities. It's not too, too bad. Uh, build a couple more hive districts. Another generator depot. Another two generator depots. And we've got one district left. Let's put it on. Agriculture. All right. So Sagi will be fully equipped there in a moment. Our construction is complete. Let's get solar panel network. Oh wait, this is Salea. Yeah, you know what, that'll let it pay for itself. The new aliens and the moo aliens. So we'll pause. I'll get those researching in a moment here. Let's get a gun battery going on Salaeus. Situation log. I'm not gonna get there. We will research these though. Build me my mining stations and research station. All right, here is a new alien race. They are also a hive mind. Interesting. We are the Hythian Collective, and we speak as one. The hive mind has taken note of your presence. We will observe for now. Our future actions will depend upon whether you are a threat, an opportunity for an expansion, or an unseen variable. We greet you as one, and will treat you the same way. We have learned of the new strategic resource encountered on Gia 3 in the territories of the Hythian Collective. Even more, new strategic resource stuff. What have we learned? Uh, exotic gases and zro. Alright. So you can see. They seem to be pretty far from us. So far our biggest threats are. These guys right on our borders. I don't like that. Um, and then these guys here. The galactic. Uh. Genogian Commiserate. And if we take a look, uh, they're about equal with us. Oh man, this hive mind has overwhelming power though. So that's not great. But they are on the opposite side of the galaxy. Alright, the Natsa Alliance has closed its borders with us. That's fine. I don't even think we talked to them yet. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Sog station, that's what we were looking at. We want to reinforce these guys. So that'll build as many ships as it can. 
planet does not have enough housing. We've met uh, some erudite explorers. They're despot despot despotic hegemony. Um, they love uh, aliens and they love science. So we are the Mythfell Stellar Hierarchy, minions of the wise overlord White Wing One. Our aim is to build an efficient society through the use of technology. And we are always keen to study new alien civilizations to see what we can learn from them. I think this might be a race I created. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Alright, they're building alloy boundaries and then a hive district, so that should help with their overpopulation and their uh, unemployment. Yeah, perfect. And then... Sog Shipyard. Alright, let's get that energy grid. Increase our energy production. Still need to reinforce as much as we can. All right, Birium. Starbase has component slots. No, it does not. <laughs> All right. Oh, a rivalry has been declared between these two. So rivalries will lower um, relations between them, but give more influence. That being said, do I care enough to want to get some more influence? Uh, is there anybody who's weaker than me at the moment? No, they're all either stronger or equivalent. I will avoid doing any sort of rivalries for the time being. Our construction is complete. Might not be the, the smartest move, but rather keep us safe than anything else. Our construction is complete. We're filling in some of these holes. Let's assign a leader. Increased evasion or increased fire speed. Oh, okay. The drones in their tireless, endless work of extracting ever-diminishing resources from their local planetoids make for a somewhat dull, but nevertheless informative subject of study. In fact, we could stand to learn a thing or two about maximizing mineral extraction rates while conserving energy. Additionally, we have found that the drones are not completely silent. They emit signal pings, though extremely infrequently, and at wavelength hard to isolate from background noise. Whether there is anyone left to receive these pings may be a mystery better left for another time. So, easy prey makes them easy to destroy, or we can increase our mining station minerals output. I'm gonna go with that. All right, we've got a super young admiral here increases our fire rate. I'm gonna go ahead and recruit him. He's gonna be in charge of our fleet. Our so I'm gonna finish uh, expanding that. This guy will get a mining station there. I'm gonna fly that way. We've got more starbase capacity. A hive nexus gives us more housing, more amenities, more synapse drone jobs, more maintenance drone jobs, and more hunter seeker jobs. This sounds like a good thing overall. Oh, but there's also statecraft. 
Uh, let's go with the colonial centralization since we have some colonies now. We're going to want uh, some more jobs and everything there. Let's see here. Let's get a stronghold. Keep our citizens safe. What did we lose here? Alright, I think our population growth is at a good spot. I'm gonna hold off on that. I'll keep doing the learning campaign. And... Army just helps with our uh, ground troops, not our um, navies, I believe. exploration. Ah. We're going to bring him back here. Because I'm hopefully we'll be able to research some of these things. Alright. did engage both again, so that's a little unfortunate. But we're doing... Nope, we're dead. <laughs> oh, we only lost one ship. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Wait. What are you doing? You go home. Reinforce our fleet and repair. We have surveyed the system. You go ahead and build us a mining station. Oh boy. More more aliens. Great. We zoom out. You can see they're over here. A little difficult for us to reach, but that's okay. It means it's difficult for them to reach us, too. And they've immediately closed their borders. Okay. Our is complete. Have you moved there? Have you built a research station? Or outpost, I mean. Oh, boy, these guys are just kicking our butts. It's not fun. Why is this up to 21? Our construction is complete. Oh, it should just be 20, not 21. Our construction is complete. We don't want that. Alright. Ah, uh, Hosphere has got some unemployment issues again. So let's build mining district, generator district, and an agricultural district for them. We'll finish this with the limited autonomy, uh, increasing our administrative capacity, and 
netting us another ascension perk. All right. Let's see here. Grasp the Void, I believe, is new. Increases our star capacity, star base capacity by five. Um, but I was thinking more executive figure. There will be no half measures or compromises uh, when implementing the edicts decided upon by our government. We go all the way or not at all. That fits more of the hive mind mentality. All right. I think we're going to lose these space debris options here. All right, you are surveying still. Back up to 14. You can build me my mining stations and research stations. Then we just have to wait. <laughs> Our construction is complete. All right. For some reason, it doesn't seem possible to engage these guys one at a time. They are much weaker now, which is helpful. But yeah, let's get my fleet as high as I can. Birium can build a new base. They are really good with districts and just menial drones in general. So let's go ahead and get him, or get this planet, a... Can I not build something that... There we are. Nope, that's maintenance. Hives. I'm looking for the techs. Doesn't look like I can build them yet. Can I upgrade the hive core? Nope. Hmm. All right. Well, um, let's go ahead and increase our maintenance depots and then we've got some engineering still nothing in the propulsion area but we can get the star hold upgrade let's do that be a little while before we have the alloys to do that especially with the way we are Trying to get our ships increased here. Our construction is complete. Technology conceived. All right. So FTL inhibitors prevent enemy ships from getting away when they go into an area with our star bases or planetary uh, or planets that have those. This will let us build listening post and gravitic sensors though, which uh, yeah, let us know where ships are traveling. This will let us extract volatile notes. So let's go with that one. All right, we're up to 19. One more ship. <laughs> then we'll go take care of these guys, hopefully successfully this time. But I'm not super... Uh, positive on that. Some research agreements and commercial packs. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Okay. All right. So 
these two guys very chummy. We are not going to be looking to do too much of that. Because people, uh, other races are either food or new places to to colonize. Alright. Now, we're going to fly our fleet here. And in a month, we will build Starbase here. See how we do. Our construction is complete. Map the stars has been. Yeah, we'll go ahead and redo that. All right. Now we're going to engage with these guys. We are much stronger than them. Managed to eliminate them. Now we're going to fly this way and see if we can only get one of them to engage with us. Perfect. Ah, us moving in brought the others upon us too. It's going to be a close one. Uh, I think we're winning. I think we're losing. We're definitely losing. We've lost. Son of a gun! Oh, you know what? Build a star base there. <laughs> Build me the mining station. Reinforce those fleets. What do we got left? About 400? 300? 300. Alright, we've got 10 ships. Let's try this one last time. We'll fly you over here. We'll actually go ahead and just build that mining station right away. Or, you know what I mean. We'll move you here. Nexus food processing facilities will make our food even more claim influence costs less so let's do that oh I think that's for war stuff oh well we'll, we'll still do it anyway it'll be helpful all right Wait for that one ship to catch up and integrate into our fleet. We'll fly this way. Give us just enough time to finish off the one fleet before the second fleet comes in. Perfect. All right. Go repair. Be reinforced. Our science ship can come in here. Do the research projects. Then survey. Boy oh boy, that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> Alright, we're going to make another alloy. And... Yeah, all right. All right. So when we analyze the debris, we end up getting some 
progress to a particular uh, particular research things, and we get extra points towards uh, the different types of researches. All right, some more some more here between the Vikrata and the Natsa. All right. We didn't like these guys anyway. They were kind of jerks right off the bat. <laughs> so don't care about that. Debris was analyzed. More debris analyzed. Build those mining stations. Is this the one with the volatile milks? Nice. Alright. What are you doing? Go return home and be reinforced. Though it rightfully belongs to us, has audaciously laid claim to one of our systems. Ooh. Okay. Well then, if they want to be our rivals, we will also rival with them. And they are making claims that this is theirs. Well, that just means we're going to upgrade this. As soon as we have the materials to do so. There's been a sweeping change in the ways of the primitives, uh, lag and choose, since we began aggressively observing members. Their hatred of our abduction shuttles have made them extremely mistrustful of anything they consider foreign. But, okay, that's the same thing as you said last time. Right, that's these guys here on Wotriax. Yeah. Okay, they can continue to be uh, distrustful of us. Alright, construction ship. Way down there. You're going to come up here, build a mining station. This one's being upgraded into a star base. You're going to be reinforced. This has been surveyed. Perfect. I will set you back to Auto Explorer. You will move here. Man, all that for just a two physics research system. Kind of lame. Okay. Oh, all right, great. All right, our fleet's up to 1.1. Let's send him up this way. And once this becomes a starport, I'm going to set this as their home. And one of the things I will give this starbase is the thing that limits how much uh, energy it takes to to maintain a fleet. Our construction is complete. Good. Um, shipyard. Because it sounds like we're going to need to deal with these guys. Crew gestation chambers. That's what we're talking about. Docked ship upgrade becomes less. And we will go ahead and also give it a missile battery, make it more protective. Now that we've got somebody <coughs> declaring things that are not them, 
we're going to adopt some domination. Because everything that's not us should serve us. And since they're not serving us, we're going to have to uh, take matters into our own hand. We'll send this science ship up here. Ethereum needs some more housing. Well, we can do that. Give it another hive district. Well, we'll give it two hive districts. Soggy can build something. Ooh, we can also upgrade. So we're going to upgrade the hive nexus. And we'll build an energy grid. Get some more energy here. There we go. That should do it. Sog station can be upgraded for 40. We'll do that. Saleo station. We're going to go with a disruption field generator to defend against anything that comes through that wormhole. We'll also add a defense platform once uh, once we have the alloys for it. Our construction is complete. Okay, uh, build research station. And once you're done with that research station, come up here, build our mining stations, and a research station. Alright, pause. Deal with the technology stuff first. Let's get ourselves some more energy from our technicians. Our flurm uh, fleet is ready to go. We're just gonna go straight in. We outpower them, so we should be doing okay there. the ship. Lost two ships, but we took them out. Now we're taking out the mining station too. All right. So we're going to send him to repairs. It'll go right to uh, like Kieran. My science ship is going to do the research projects and then survey. And then we will hopefully have a ship up here to build um, a star base there. Other scientist is like way out here exploring, which is fantastic. All right, let's get him a defense platform. All right, Florium Starbase. We actually have to zoom in here. We're gonna set that as its home base. We're going to have it reinforce as it can. The science ship is on its way there. This construction ship will head over here. Just waiting on some more, more alloys. We're gonna get this to max capacity in case this guy tries to declare war on us. We're gonna be ready for him. Our resource storage is full with regards to food. Wow, I, we are really producing some food here. 
Oh, excuse me. All right. Let's up this to sell 50 food. And let's uh let's take a look at our edicts here. Let's do the drone campaign and the war drone campaign. Well, oh, too late. Already clicked it. <laughs> um, let's see. Who's around that's not a jerk? These guys were okay. Let us offer a trade deal. We have a crap ton of food. Ah, okay, shift ups it by 100. And a single click, or control ups it by 10. Shift by 100. Let's go to 5,000. Um, our total offer is zero. Their total offer is minus, oh. I did that in reverse. Whoops. All right, we're going to give food. We're going to give you 5,000 food. We would like you to give us some alloys. See if they'll take that. They accept it. Perfect. So now we can fully reinforce our, our fleet. And they want a non aggression pact? I'll take a non aggression pact with them. It means that if these guys do get aggressive, we don't have to worry about more reinforcements here. We'll also take their research proposal. I like that this guy's nearly come all the way back around by going up through this area. Alright. Things are looking okay. We've got this area pretty well protected, so when he tries to initiate his claims, we can protect ourselves. All right, this guy has reopened his borders, which we don't really care about. Interesting that there seems to be some sort of occupation going on over here. Might explain why they were. Uh... Ooh. Let's go ahead and do that research. The so level eight again. So that most likely means it's another one of the uh, uh, artifacts. Yeah, we'll take the regenerative full tissue. We have received a communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that called themselves the Divine Pentholian Covenant. They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in on the communication of another empire we are in contact with. Heed this message, aliens. I represent the Divine Pentholian Covenant, led by the illustrious matriarch Rala Payat. We rule our region of space under a divine mandate, and so long as you do not mock our faith in what passes for your culture, there may be peace between us. All right. Abandoned gateway. An ancient space station of some kind has been located at the edge of the Sapir system. The strong residual subspace signature that surrounds the station indicates that it may be a gateway of sorts. 
part of a theoretical network of similar stations that at some point would have allowed for near instantaneous travel between different parts of the galaxy. Assuming this is a gateway, its current state of disrepair has rendered it unusable. If it could be restored uh, into working order, its owner would potentially be able to access any other functional gateways in the galaxy, enabling travel across huge distances in a matter of days. Very intriguing. Where is Sapir? <laughs> is that part of our system? Doesn't sound familiar. I believe there is a way to search for systems. Aha! Sapir. Down here. Alright, that's in the Divine Pentelium's uh, territory. So I don't really care. Uh, at least not yet, anyway. Alright. Where's my other construction zip? Alright. He's heading that way already. I'm going to send this guy down here. Since we're researching how to deal with the, the voltaic mo- uh, excuse me, volatile moats. Hey, our buddies have declared war against the people who are trying to claim one of our systems. I like it. It means we'll probably not have to worry about it after all. Where's my technology? Learning campaign has expired. We'll re-up that. Oh, we need we still need the moat stabilization. Right, right. Well then what did I just uh research? I thought that was the moat stabilization research. Oh well. Alright, so they've made peace with each other. Good for them. We are not yet in a position where we can declare war. Um, so we can have a navy of 24, but our fleet size is still 20. Alright, he's nearly done with that. When he does finish, I want him to finish the uh, surveying. All right, the Voltom satellite. A small Voltom satellite was found in orbit of Koldak 6. It had been set up to continuously repeat a message until its power source drained millions of years ago. We salvaged its transmitter array, but could only recover a small portion of the transmission. The main purpose of this satellite was apparently to preach the dominant Voltom philosophy to neighboring civilizations. Its message speaks of the need to disconnect and to embrace true existence, whatever that means. Curious. All right, I'm gonna let him finish that, and then we'll research project there. Something else just came. More science ships. Okay. They are very serious about surveying the system. Perfect. We are building a starbase here. Because <laughs> that is 18 minerals. That is a lot of minerals. Oh, Birum has unemployment again. Uh, this is a fringe planet. Ah, okay, so this turns minerals into chemical moats. Hmm, I'll pass on that. Let's get an energy grid. And what does this need to upgrade? 
40 population. Oh, we're getting there. Um, all right. Once we've got farmers, I'll get a mining district and a generator district going. Actually, let's make it two generator districts and two mining districts. Our construction is complete. Let's get our... Ah, no! Crud. Stop. This guy. Mining stations and research station. And then this guy... I was sending down this way. He'll build an outpost for me there. Oh, also claiming the Koldak system. Well, I think I know what that means. Upgrade that to a start port. All right. After careful analysis of the Voltom transmitter array, our archaeologists and data engineers have concluded that the machinery does not contain any technologies of value to us. The project has greatly improved our understanding of the primary Voltom programming language, however. This will hopefully make it easier to decipher their data in the future. All right. And now, we can send you on your merry way to uh, do some surveying. Technology conceived. Another technology. And we can upgrade some of our ships to star holes. And we've got a propulsion thing, so let's go ahead and research that. Um, let me deal with this building that can be built. This will do a, a chemical plant. And actually. I think here is going to be a good point for us to go ahead and call it a day. Um, we've expanded pretty far. We've uh, got these guys here to our south, if you will. Um, we've got these guys here blocking us off to the north. But we are able to get cold axe, which gives us a great little uh, area to expand further this way without getting... Uh, completely blocked in by these guys. They are claiming Coldax and they're claiming like Tyran, but we're building some star bases that'll help us protect it. We've got our fleet up here as well. Um, since our naval capacity is at 24, we'll be able to upgrade into star holds, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and do um, back at SOG. SOG's going to create a new fleet for us as well. We've got four more. That's going to make a second fleet. Um, and then as we get more and more naval capacity, I'll expand the, the size of that second fleet. Uh, but for right now, this is where we're going to save it up and call it a night or a day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And good luck on Monday. I'll see you tomorrow night for MMO Mondays, where we'll keep playing some more Final Fantasy XIV uh, Shadowbringers main story quest. So yeah, thank you, and have a great one.